Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Solar Saturday here on Why Not RV. This week we're going to talk about the difference between 12 volt, 24 volt, and 48 volt configurations. Remember, if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. So a lot of people have that question of, well, what my RV is a 12 volt system. Why do I? Why should I go to a 24 volt or to a 48 volt system? So let's talk about that a little bit. I'm going to start by saying this: 12 volt systems are good for your basic needs. 24 volt systems are for your more advanced needs and 48 volt systems are for the we'll call them the expert or the high-end needs i'm going to also put it like this instead of saying basic advanced and expert we're going to say uh a thousand to two thousand two thousand to four thousand and four thousand and above okay if you're going to be using let's say less than two thousand watts worth of like inverter power okay that that's what you need to do and a 12 volt system is really perfectly fine there's no need to go up to a higher voltage system however if you're making more like you know two to three thousand or or upwards of four thousand watts of power you probably want to go to at least a 24 volt system just due to the overall amperage that would come from 12 volt we'll talk about that in a second and then of course if you're going with uh, anything more than four thousand watts worth of inverter you're gonna want to go with a 48 volt system. The 24 volt system is, is still fine as well. However, the higher the voltage, the better and more efficient everything can run. So let's talk about that and why uh, I, I'm saying these things. So if you don't know already, obviously an inverter takes your battery power and converts it into AC power. So if you have a 12 volt system, you're taking 12 volts of DC power and turning it into 120 volts of AC power. So that is 10 times the amount of voltage. Now, if you have a 24 volt system and you're making 120 volts, guess what? You're now only going five times the amount of voltage, right? Instead of 10 times, you're now only five times. And then of course, with the 48 volt system, you know, it's not even three times, you know, two and a half times the amount of voltage from a 48 volt system to get to your 120 volts. So going from 12 volts to 120 volts, 24 volts to 120 volts, and 48 volts to 140 or 120 volts. Uh, as you see, as you get higher in the DC voltage, the there's less voltage that it needs to gain to get to the AC side of things. And so things can run a lot more efficiently. So let's just take 3000 watts for a baseline, okay? So if you have a 12 volt system and you are trying to make 3000 watts of AC power, that is 250 amps. Okay, so uh, volts times amps equals watts. So if I know that I'm making 3000 watts and I know that we're doing it off a 12 volt system, you divide 3000 by 12 and you get 250 amps. So 250 amps is a lot of amperage going through a, a cable. So you need really, really thick cable to run that four aught cable. Um, now a 24 volt system, okay, same, same scenario, 3000 watts going to 24 volt now, uh, or from 24 volt making 3000 watts, you're now only making a, or using 125 amps. Okay, so half the amount of amperage for the same amount of wattage. Right there, does that start to make sense? So now we take it one step further, we go to a 48 volt system, and, and hold on, let's backtrack. The 24 volt system, 125 amps to make 3000 watts. So at the 12 volt, I said you probably need about four watt cable. In 24 volt, you probably just need like a zero gauge cable. Now in 48 volt configuration, you're only pulling 62 and a half amps, uh, or you know, some, somewhere in that, in that area for the same 3000 watts. So from 250 all the way down to now, we're in the low 60s of amperage to, to make the same amount of wattage. That's why the higher the voltage system is, the more efficient things can run. Cause now in that 48 con volt configuration, you probably only need a two gauge wire. Not two watt, probably two gauge. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that right there is why you go with a higher voltage system. Now, of course, with higher voltage systems comes the whole side of, well, now I gotta go back down to 12 volt because my RV is 12 volts. So all my lights, my fans, the motors, everything is 12 volts. So how do I do that? You do that with a standard DC to DC converter. So if you have a 24 volt system and your RV is 12 volt, you're just making, you're just going from a 
24 slash 12 DC to DC converter. It's taking 24 volts in and it's producing 12 volts out. And that's how you now resupply power to your 12 volt system. Now, depending on what you have inside the rig, such as lights and fans, you probably don't need anything other than that converter. They can, they come as different things that have uh, their built-in power supply. So it doesn't necessarily need like its own 12 volt battery system. Uh, the converter is all that it needs, you know, the rate and amperage and say, let's say you have a 30 amp uh, DC to DC converter, boom, that's all you need, you're good to go. But if you have something like a big hydraulic pump or your generator needs to start off of the 12 volt system, that you might need either a couple of the DC to DC converters or you do what I did. Whereas I just, I kept a 12 volt battery for the 12 volt system and my DC to DC converters are going from 48 volt down to 12 volt, but they're just maintaining voltage in that battery, basically just keeping the battery charged and everything in this in the RV it runs off 12 volt is technically running off that battery and the converters are just constantly resupplying that battery with power now again you probably only need to do that if you have those really big heavy loads now, if you have like you know electric schwintech motors or cable cable driven uh slides um just lights and just fans you probably don't even need that type of thing i'm not saying you do or don't because it's all experimental to in my opinion but um i, I know that you know, the only thing that my converters cannot handle by themselves is starting the generator and my big hydraulic pump. Those are just two really, really big current draws on the 12 volt side of things that it's just hard to, for those converters to do everything for it to start. So between your, you know, overall heat gain and heat, you know, from, from different size cables, right? Going to a bigger or a higher voltage system gives you less uh, cabling, right? Smaller cables, thinner cables. Well, that does a couple things for you. Number one is weight. Of course, going, you know, four out cables are these big old thick suckers. I mean, they're, they're big and they're heavy and they're hard to work with. They're hard to bend. They're hard to do stuff with. And, uh, they're, they're just very difficult to work with. So if you have those real high capacity systems, like a 3000 watt inverter, and you need 250 amps to be able to go from your 12 volt into the 3000 Watts, that's very difficult. 250 amps, four rock cabling, that's really thick, heavy, heavy duty cable. And that's where I'm saying that you should maybe start to consider going to a 24 volt system so you can get away with half of the amount of wire, literally half. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a no brainer in my opinion. But again, it just depends on what type of system you're building and what level of complexity you're building it to. So to wrap up, we're gonna go ahead and just re-hit a couple points. Number one is cabling and, and heat okay because that amperage is what creates heat and the cabling and the cable size and the wire size and stuff like that that's one of the biggest reasons right there to step up into the 24 or 48 volt configurations um, the next thing is of course efficiency going from 12 volts to 120 volts takes 10 times the amount of voltage to get there and so the inverters and stuff like that they're they don't run nearly as efficient and that that um, efficiency loss adds up to quite a bit of power over time. So again, if you're building like a smaller system, it's no big deal. But if you're building anything with significance, you know, 2000 Watts and above, you're going to want to consider 24 volt. And then of course, if you're going above 4000 Watts, that's where I'd really consider the 48 volt configuration. I hope you guys learned something. Um, if you did, please make sure to drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Let me know any of your questions, anything else I can try and answer for you. I appreciate you watching Why Not RV. We'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.